What is going on my Storm Chasing family and Storm Chaser Chad here and by clicking on this video it means you're wanting to become a Storm Chaser and literally it is as simple as one, two, and three. And by that I just mean first step you click this video so that means you're wanting to become a Storm Chaser. Second step you need a storm chasing vehicle it could be anything it could be a car it could be a truck it could be an suv it could be an 18 wheeler it could be an armor tank like the tiv it could be anything that can get you from point a to point b literally and the second part is is really the simplest thing is is you know, what's going on the last step literally is just drive to the storm pretty simple and congratulations you've become a storm chaser that's what i'm talking about Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you liked the video. Comment below what you think of this. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and join the Storm Chasing family. And I will see y'all in the next video. <laughs> and that's what I call a quick video, if you know what I mean, buddy. What, you don't think that was funny? Come on now, that was funny. Really? You, you don't don't get upset with me. I was just trying to make it funny. If he, yeah, I'm, uh, okay, fine. All right, we'll get back to the regular video that I'm supposed to be doing. I was trying to be funny, but you don't even think that was funny. So, okay, let's get back to the real video, okay? Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification, turn that bell on, so when I go live or I post a video, you'll know about it. And also, at the very end of this video, I'll tell a quick story of why I truly became a storm chaser. Don't miss it. Okay, but no, for real, storm chasing isn't really that easy. You can't really just hop in your vehicle and go on a storm chase and call yourself a storm chaser. There's a little bit more to it, and all it really consists of is just a lot of studying and a lot of preparation, and I'll go over that here in just a minute. All right, so let's get into it. Storm chasing, what is it and how to become it? Easy. All you have to do is study, 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 get some experience on the ground, on the road, with some other storm chasers before becoming a storm chaser. And really, first things first, if you want to become a storm chaser, what I would highly recommend is taking the free online course that the National Weather Service provide and becoming a sky-worn spotter. Usually they uh, offer before COVID, there was actual classes that you could actually attend that local o OEMs or Office of Emergency Management would actually offer for free you just basically attend the class you watch a, a two hour three hour presentation of what you're actually seeing how to report to the national weather service and kind of get measurements as far as what's the size hailstone there is um, what you're actually seeing as far as rotation in the clouds uh, if there is a wall cloud i mean basically all of what you really need to know as far as the essential stuff to reporting to the national weather service or a local law enforcement if you don't have means of getting in touch with the national weather service but now since covid unfortunately all we could really do is go to online courses which is a lot easier um, sometimes it's on facebook sometimes they actually have youtube videos that actually go into more in depth of um, what sky, sky warrant spotter is and basically how to become it and you get a little certificate that says hey you're a sky warrant spotter they also send out sometimes like a little decal like I have on my truck that you know shows that you're a sky warrant spotter. Since public safety is probably one of my main main goals, I like to try to stay in touch with the National Weather Service with local news medias and also local enforcement. In case of an emergency where there is a tornado on the ground, they know personally who I am and can trust me and it just builds a relationship with you know the National Weather Service or local National Weather Service here in Shreveport. Um, also, when it comes down to local law enforcement, be it um, county or even cities, um, just reaching out to local sheriffs, local uh, chiefs and stuff like that with fire departments and stuff, just so that way, in case of an emergency, like I always say, they know that, hey, personally, I know Chad, he's been reliable, but that just comes with building your relationship with your local National Weather Service, local OEMs, local fire departments, police departments, things of that sort, which if you go in back into your local safety, in which that should always be priority, is safety above all else. All right, second of all, that right there, Snowball, you wanna say hi? Didn't think so. Thirdly, if you're wanting to become a storm chaser, which by watching this video, you're wishing to become a storm chaser, you got to have a little bit of knowledge and the internet is a vast place of knowledge that is sometimes free to learn sometimes you have to pay for it which some of the classes that I, i've taken 
and of course YouTube. YouTube has a lot of videos as far as you know learning the radar, learning um, photographs and stuff like that which anything that I've can see you know you know you learn something new every day me I learned things that I'd never knew and been doing this for 10 15 plus years so as far as that goes the internet is a vast place of knowledge sometimes it's free sometimes you have to pay for it which if it's anything to do with mother nature it is well worth it and if it furthers your knowledge to something that you didn't know well, hey, it's, it's worth it. You know, that's the knowledge that you can in, to uh, implement on your next chase, your next video, or if something happens that you didn't quite know what exactly went on, anything that you can ask somebody else. I know a couple of my chaser friends that thankfully I'm very fortunate enough by. I've been fortunate enough to actually um, become acquainted with, uh, or I'd, I'd like to think that I've become acquainted with, um, I reach out to them and thankfully they answer my questions they answer you know some of the stupidest questions that I may have but I'd like to think that hopefully with their knowledge and my knowledge combined if something happens like that again I already kind of know somewhat a little bit about it and can further increase my knowledge to the National Weather Service and things of that nature so it's never a stupid question I always feel like sometimes there is things that I may not know, but if I ask somebody and they explain it to me, oh, well, I kind of knew that already, but the way that they explained it is a lot simpler than what I was trying to think it was. So always reach out to your friends. If they have the answer to it, then, you know, bought a book, bought a boom, there you go, you got your answer. So to sum it up, if you want to become a storm chaser, it really just boils down to a lot of knowledge and what you're seeing. If you have the communications with the National Weather Service and local law enforcement or you know, fire departments, stuff like that, you know, emergency management, stings of that nature. If you have your Skywarn spotter certificate, that's another big plus. But um, it all boils down, plain and simply, public safety. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything that I have left out or have forgotten, which I'm sure there's probably a hundred different things that I probably have forgotten, main thing that I just want to stress is that public safety is an absolute must of mine. Becoming a storm chaser really just boils down to simply if you have communications with the National Weather Service, local law enforcement, be it a Skywarn spotter, or if you just have a couple of classes online, really it, all it is is as long as you know exactly what you're seeing above that mother nature is reporting it to the local authorities or the national weather service they're really the ones behind the scenes doing everything possible and they truly depend on storm chasers and local authorities to really be the eyes for them on the ground and that means if they can know hey there is a wall cloud the radar verifies it they can effectively put out a tornado warning that says hey storm spotters reported a wall cloud or a funnel cloud or a tornado on the ground that way the public knows that hey there is a tornado on the ground versus just something where hey radar indicated may not be anything that could you know ultimately cost the life of a loved one and that is what I'm trying to hopefully prevent maybe one day. I know I may be blabbing on a whole, about, a whole bunch of things, but public safety is absolutely must of mine. I may have repeated myself a hundred different times, but I cannot stress it enough, the importance of public safety to me. And hopefully you've learned something from this video. Hopefully you'll be able to become a storm chaser. And maybe one of these days I'll be able to catch you out on the field in the next storm chase. Or who knows, maybe I may get a million subscribers and take a whole bunch of my subscribers out on a storm chase for in Oklahoma or someplace of that, you know. So that's something always to look forward to, what I look forward to mainly. But uh, hopefully you've learned something. As I said, all of the links that I will be posting in the bottom will have the National Weather Service homepage, how to become a Skywarn spotter. And if I could find any classes that I have taken in the past in regards to free online courses, I'll definitely post them in the descriptions below. So please, please, please look down there below and check out the links in the descriptions. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, and I will be doing a 10,000 subscriber thank you live stream as soon as I hit that 10,000 mark. So please, please be sure to check out that video whenever it comes out. It's a beautiful day outside. I had to throw on my glasses, and so I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day. Hopefully, you get to enjoy the rest of yours. I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care. God bless, and I love each and every one of y'all. Y'all be safe.
So did it do good on my video? Did you like it? Uh, you don't like it? Huh? Did I do good? Yeah, I think I did pretty good. Did you laugh? I was talking too much. I'm sorry. I know I was talking too much. Yeah, I was talking too much. So if you're at the end of the video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. And if you didn't, well, I'm terribly sorry. But a number one question that I have been asked a whole bunch and in the comments was why I became a storm chaser. And the real honest answer is back in October 13th of 2014, there was an EF2 tornado that hit pretty close to our hometown. And sadly, there was a fatality in there that uh, cost the life of a loved one. Uh, wasn't close to me, but being close to home, it did feel like it was family. This was an EF2 tornado that did about 120, 130 mile an hour winds. It literally picked up a mobile home about 50 feet off, carried it about another 100 yards before laying it back to the ground and just scattering it everywhere. Like I said, unfortunately, the father did pass away. The mother was uh, seriously injured, and the three kids suffered bumps and bruises. But the story was behind it that they were protecting their children, and which uh, thankfully uh, saved the kids' lives, but at the cost of you know a loved one and serious injuries to the other. And also, the officer that was on scene helping them uh, suffered minor energy, uh, minor injuries whenever he was electrocuted because of the debris. That really hit close to home for me personally and really emphasized the importance that I really wanted to make sure that if there was a tornado close to home that I would be the one to hopefully report it and to uh, get the uh, the awareness. Of course this was this tornado was at nighttime. It was difficult to see. Uh, I believe there was a clip that uh, the sheriff's office that was driving down to you know do some storm reports actually has the clip of the tornado crossing right in front of him and that's right before it hit that uh, that family's home but that really kind of emphasized the importance of me wanting to get out there put my eyes on the ground and to get the notifications out to the National Weather Service, to local OEMs, local law enforcement, and really kind of pushed me to where I'm at today in being a storm chaser and really wanting to pursue the public safety of things. But that's why I became a storm chaser. I'll see y'all in the next one.